So it's no secret that the Democratic Party um, and its loyalists do not like the Green Party. In fact, they loathe the Green Party. And it's not necessarily because of the policies that the Green Party supports. It's because the Green Party is seen as a competitor to the Democratic Party. And they primarily dislike them because they view the Greens as spoilers in elections, predominantly presidential elections. Now, on this program, I have talked repeatedly about the electoral reform that we can implement, that Democrats could implement, that's relatively easy, that would stop this from being an issue. If you are worried about the spoiler effect, there are measures you can take to minimize the threat of spoilage. But Democrats aren't opting for electoral reform. Rather, they are waging a war on the Green Party, and they're going about minimizing the effect of spoilage in a much more aggressive way. So this article from the Texas Tribune kind of sheds light on that. Quote, Texas Democrats are successfully suing to kick Green Party candidates off the November ballot. Democrats won legal rulings Wednesday blocking Green Party nominees for U.S. Senate, Railroad Commissioner, and the 21st Congressional District from appearing on the November ballot. Now, the article goes on to explain, state and national Democrats are waging a legal offensive to kick Green Party candidates off the ballot in some of Texas's highest profile races this fall, and they are seeing success. The Democrats are largely targeting Green Party candidates because they have not paid filing fees, a new requirement for third parties under a law passed by the legislature last year. The filing fees were already required of Democratic and Republican candidates. Multiple lawsuits that remain pending are challenging the new law, and the Green Party of Texas has been upfront that most of its candidates are not paying the fees while they await a resolution to the litigation. The Green Party argues that the filing fees, which go up to $5,000 for a U.S. Senate race, are an unconstitutional burden. It has also pointed out that the fees normally go toward primaries, something neither the Green nor Libertarian parties conducts because both nominate their candidates at conventions. Only two of the Green Party's eight nominees for November have submitted the fees, according to the Secretary of State. Responding to Wednesday's rulings, the Texas Green Party said the legal challenges were suspiciously timed, coming after the Monday deadline for write-in candidates to file with the state and days before a series of deadlines finalizing the November ballot. Now, Texas isn't the only state where the Green Party's voters are being disenfranchised. It's also happening in other states across the country. This is kind of a national strategy that Democrats seem to be pursuing. And I'm not necessarily saying that this is the agenda of the National Democratic Party because it's very decentralized and oftentimes it occurs at the state level. But Democrats are, in fact, trying to get the Greens off the ballot. And this just happened in Wisconsin. So now in the state of Wisconsin in 2020, Howie Hawkins and Angela Walker, the Green Party nominees, will not be on the ballot. So as the Washington Post explains, the Wisconsin Supreme Court ruled Monday that the Green Party presidential ticket is ineligible to appear on the state ballot, a relief for state and local election officials who feared an addition at this late date would upend election preparations. The decision comes after the Wisconsin Elections Commission declined on August 20th to put presidential contender Howie Hawkins and his Green Party running mate Angela Walker on the November 3rd ballot because their signature petitions featured two different addresses for Walker. State election officials had argued that the campaign failed to fix the discrepancy according to state requirements. A reversal of that decision would have triggered a scramble across the state among election officials who would have had to order new ballots and find the money to pay for them, while facing imminent state and federal deadlines to send them to voters. Now, CNN adds, Democrats will claim the ruling as a win for their nominee, Joe Biden, because Hawkins could have played spoiler in a state that had one of the closest margins in 2016. In 2016, Green Party candidate Jill Stein received 31,072 votes in Wisconsin, more than the 22 2,748 vote margin that handed Trump a victory in the state over Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton. Now, I included those last two paragraphs from CNN because I've heard this argument a lot, not just from pundits, not just from Democratic Party officials, but from a lot of individuals who are concerned about the spoiler effect. And it's interesting because it makes a really bold assumption. It assumes that all of those votes that went to Jill Stein would have automatically went to Hillary Clinton if Jill Stein wasn't an option, if she wasn't on the ballot in 2016. However, if you're going to assume that Jill Stein played spoiler to Hillary Clinton, you also have to assume that Gary Johnson played spoiler to Donald Trump. And as a result, all of the votes that would have otherwise went to uh, Gary Johnson would have went to Donald Trump had Gary Johnson not been an option. So if we actually remove all the spoilers from this equation, what would have happened in Wisconsin in 2016? Well, Gary Johnson got three times more votes 
than Jill Stein. So technically, he was actually a bigger spoiler than Jill Stein. So let's take both of these spoilers out of the equation and distribute both of their vote totals to Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Now, when you do this, as you can see here, Donald Trump still wins. And he doesn't just win again in this scenario. He actually increases his margin of victory. So if we're talking about spoilers in Wisconsin, the spoiler effect actually helped Democrats in this instance if we're going to accept this notion that, you know, those votes would have automatically went to one of the two main parties had the spoiler options not been on the ballot. But there's this assumption that when we're talking about the spoiler effect, it automatically harms Democrats. But it goes both ways. Again, if you assume that all of those votes that went to Jill Stein would have went to Hillary Clinton if Jill Stein wasn't an option, you have to assume the same if you're logical on the other side, because the Libertarian Party is more closer to Republicans ideologically than they are to Democrats and the Green Party. So you have to assume that if Jill Stein was a spoiler for Hillary Clinton, Gary Johnson was a spoiler for Donald Trump, but removing both spoilers still doesn't help Hillary Clinton. She still loses, but loses by a larger margin because the spoiler effect helped the Democrats in Wisconsin, but Hillary Clinton still lost. But let's kind of put aside whether or not Jill Stein was or wasn't a spoiler, in spite of the reality of the spoiler effect, which is a real thing in many instances, is it democratic to remove a party off of the ballot to prevent spoilage? I would argue not only that it's undemocratic, but it's a form of voter suppression. It is a form of voter suppression. Because in a country where, what is it, like a third of Americans don't vote, maybe larger, we need people to vote. We need them to participate in democracy because if people don't partake in the process, democracy dies. So we need there to be some sort of buy-in. And just getting people to vote in and of itself is a challenge. But if you're discouraging them from voting... Not only is that bad for democracy, but it could end up being counterproductive because let's say somebody in Wisconsin didn't actually want to support Hillary Clinton, but they came out to vote for Jill Stein. Well, the presidential race isn't the only race taking place. Maybe there wasn't a good Green Party option for the U.S. Senate or their House representative. So now, if those voters who were only coming out to vote for Jill Stein don't have that option or didn't have that option in 2016... Maybe now we're not helping down ballot Democrats because I voted for Jill Stein in 2016, but then down the ticket, I voted for Democrats. And I say this as someone who lives in a deep blue state. I would actually vote for Joe Biden or would have voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016 had I lived in a battleground state. But I acknowledge that even in these swing states, there are going to be people that aren't going to do that. They're not going to do what I would do. People are going to vote third party. That's just a fact of reality. Third parties exist in every single democracy around the world, including in two-party systems. That is a fact of reality. You are never going to get away from that. Third parties exist in democracies. And even if they're never going to win or they're not electorally successful most of the time, the fact that they exist means democracy is working. But once you start shutting them out, that means democracy isn't working. And I think Owen Higgins put it best. 100% going to be one of those moments we look back on in 5 to 10 years as a precursor to something worse. And all the people you see celebrating it today will be oh so confused. And I say this because it's troubling to see Democrats celebrate this. Celebrate the Greens getting kicked off the ballot. You can simultaneously acknowledge that the Greens could potentially be a spoiler in some instances, but also acknowledge that third parties and independents will always be on the ballots in our system, even in two-party systems. That's something that all democracies have to deal with. Even in Canada, they have basically a multi-party system. I mean, it's still pretty majoritarian. You usually just have either the conservatives or the liberals in power in government, but even in certain writings, you have to determine, do I want to vote for... NDP, which is the more left-wing party, if that means that the liberals will be less likely to defeat the conservative. I mean, this is something that you have to grapple with as a democracy. It's one of the things that comes with democracy. They're always going to exist. Now, you can choose to suppress them and suppress votes of these parties, or you can choose to do electoral reform. 
But Democrats haven't pursued that, and instead they are celebrating Greens getting kicked off the ballot. And someone who I admire and respect, very much so. Adi Barkin literally celebrated this and implied that this was like a triumph for democracy because voters have less options. And I love you, Adi. You're a great person, and I respect everything that you do. I really admire your advocacy for Medicare for All, but restricting options isn't going to make our democracy more democratic. It's going to be antithetical to democracy. Because again, even if you're worried about the spoiler effect, that's democracy. Too bad. Win over those votes or do electoral reform. And here's the thing, like, Democrats have been worried about the Green Party now for decades. Even back in the 90s, there are articles from the New York Times of Democrats speaking out about how they're worried about the rise of the Green Party. And this came after Bill Clinton's third way approach drove a lot of people out of the Democratic Party and they started to gravitate more towards the Green Party. And decades have passed, but what have Democrats done to minimize the spoiler effect? Not a single goddamn thing, unless we're talking about voter suppression and trying to kick the Greens off the ballots or try to disenfranchise Green voters, you know, kick them out of debates. Listen, if you truly are worried about the spoiler effect, you can try to kick the Greens off the ballot. That is one way to uh, minimize the spoiler effect, but you're going to cultivate resentment. But a more powerful way of minimizing the spoiler effect is by instituting ranked choice voting nationwide. Democrats have been worried about the Green Party again for a really long time. They had a supermajority in 2009. Why didn't you institute ranked choice voting then? Hell, now there's a phenomenal bill by Don Byers Jr. It's HR 4000. This is called the Fair Representation Act. Do you know how many Democrats have co-sponsored this legislation? Six, six Democrats, all of them claim to be worried about the spoiler effect very few of them have co-sponsored this legislation. Has any member of Congress who's spoken out against the threat that Greens pose to our democracy co-sponsored this bill, which would move us to ranked choice voting? Make us more proportional? Well, no, because they don't want to do that. Because they would rather browbeat people into supporting them rather than changing themselves. Like you can, if you want to minimize the spoiler effect, what you can try to do is undercut the appeal of the Green Party. Embrace one big policy on the Green Party's platform, Medicare for all. And then you tell voters, listen, you want Medicare for all? You have to vote for us. We're the ones who support Medicare for all. I get that they have a better foreign policy plan than us. I get that they support, you know, a, a more robust education reform plan. But we support Medicare for all. You got to vote for us. We're the only ones who can win. Vote for us. We live in a two-party system. They can do that. They can try to undercut the appeal of the Green Party by copying some of those policies. They're not doing that. They can do electoral reform. Uh, they don't seem interested in that. In fact, at a town hall a couple of years ago, I asked my own representative uh, if she would be willing to co-sponsor HR 4000. It was HR uh, 3057, I think, at the time. And she said, oh, well, I haven't heard of this. I will look into it. It's been a couple years. She hasn't co-sponsored it yet, so they don't seem interested in actually minimizing the spoiler effect because they don't want to share power. If they actually did ranked choice voting, that would lead to them losing power because people would gravitate more towards the Greens in many instances if they weren't worried about the spoiler effect. But because normal voters themselves are worried about the spoiler effect, that's why Duverger's law is a thing. That's why we have the two-party duopoly. It's because nobody wants to spoil the vote, so they end up making a strategic choice to vote for one of the two main parties, so that way one of the worst options don't win. I mean, I would be doing this in a swing state. So at the end of the day, I'm not going to say that it's illegitimate to be, you know, concerned about the spoiler effect because I'm always concerned. Like I was concerned about the spoiler effect uh, during the Democratic Party primaries. I was worried that, you know, the progressive or anti-establishment candidates would split the votes. I wanted everyone to kind of consolidate around Bernie Sanders so we'd have the best shot at winning. I mean, this is what you do. You have to be strategic, right? So it's not like you're unreasonable if you're worried about the spoiler effect. And I understand the need to defeat Donald Trump and to avoid the threat of fascism. Like, I get this. I'm not minimizing the worry that spoilage poses. But what I am saying is that if you do want to minimize the threat of spoilers, uh, Maine has led the way. Maine has led the way. A corporate Democrat won the Democratic Party primary, and you have a Green Party member still running with zero threat 
of spoiling that Senate race against Susan Collins. You have Lisa Savage running. You can rank your choices. If you want to vote for Lisa Savage, if you don't really like Sarah Gideon, you can rank your choices. Lisa Savage won, Sarah Gideon two. This is a ballot initiative. Now, Democrats can speed up this process, uh, make it easier by just introducing this legislatively. Will they do that? Probably not. Because then you're kind of agreeing to share power with Greens. Like, I'm not saying that if we had ranked choice voting overnight, the Greens would be electorally viable and Libertarians would be electorally viable. But if we did nationwide ranked choice voting and simple electoral reform like that, would the threat of spoilage go away? Absolutely. But yet we hear nothing about that from the people who scream the loudest about this issue. And it's not like you know, the Greens just manifested in 2016 with Jill Stein. It's not like they just, you know, came into existence uh, with Ralph Nader back in 2000. There's always going to be third parties in democratic systems. That is a fact of reality. Third parties that are not viable. And even in multi-party systems, there are fringe parties that never get elected but still exist because people vote for them. You can never vote for them yourselves. You can disagree with their existence. But their existence is legitimate if you believe in democracy. You can't have it both ways. If you support democracy, you have to support the existence of these parties. But what you can do is actually make our electoral system more equitable. But again, the people who I hear scream the loudest about the spoiler effect, they're not talking about ranked choice voting. And that is really, really frustrating. So this is what Democrats are doing. They're going to try to get the Greens kicked off the ballot in order to avoid the spoiler effect when they could just do ranked choice voting or try to appeal to the Green Party's voters. Because the Green Party, we don't know for a fact that if Jill Stein wasn't on the ballot in Wisconsin every Jill Stein voter would have supported Hillary Clinton. Like, I'd be willing to guess at least half of them would have stayed home and not voted. And at a time when voter participation is really low, that's a sign that our democracy is in poor health and we don't need less people to vote. We don't need to give people fewer reasons to vote. We need to give people more reasons to vote. But that's just my take. And uh, I agree with Owen Higgins. This is a precursor of something much worse to come. Now, that's too bad. Because if you're worried about the spoiler effect, you can go about it in a much more equitable way where you're not turning off millions of people potentially.